Hi everyone, how are you all doing? Had a bit of a sort out today, into the loft I was earlier, rumbling through and I found some more pub locations. James Book, a lot of them that I've remembered from the past. And I thought I'd just get them out and put them next to my Kung Fu Min. Yeah, here we go, I'll just uh, zoom in on the Kung Fu Min. That'll do for now. But you can see, got a couple of them to hold the books up off Amazon. Right, so I'm off this week and uh, the reason for that is um, on the National Health Service app I got a little message to say that I've got to self-isolate for seven days. Yeah, I wasn't expecting it. it. Took me by surprise, I'll tell you. So I don't go back to work apparently. I don't go back to work until Monday 16th. So I've got a bit of time to kill. But uh, they didn't send it to me until midnight on Sunday. But I was fast asleep by midnight, so I set off for work on the Monday morning because I was totally oblivious to the fact that I should be self-isolating. And I get to Bangor and I do my first job. And then I run over to Colwyn Bay, which is in North Wales. And I do my second job. And uh, I'm walking through the main area where the Bayview shopping centre is in Colwyn Bay and I heard one single solitary man give out some kind of warning message. Nothing to do with Jehovah's Witnesses by the way this. This is completely independent. This was just a man that had decided to make himself um, like a placard sort of t-shirt, you know like a marshal wears. Have you seen those marshal um, they just drop them over the neck like that. Well, he made one of them, and it was about returning to Christ before it's too late. So that's the first thing I noticed as I'm walking towards him. And I thought, that's interesting. And then I thought, I'd have listened to what he had to say. But I couldn't hang about, so I you know, only had about a couple of minutes to listen. And I picked this up, and I found this very, very interesting. So he's giving out this message to all the shoppers, so much sort of walking by him, you know, like they do, the same with George Witnesses, they sort of dart either side of the JWs, don't they, when they're on the magazine carts. Well, they were kind of doing the same with him. But I heard him say, how can you expect the Lord to save you when you haven't even lifted a finger to get to know him? And I thought to myself, that sounds remarkably like he's telling people some kind of warning message. Well, he's done that on his own bat. You know, I didn't notice what denomination of church he belonged to. You know, he just for me, it just seemed like some single bloke that had just set himself up to uh, to give out this message. And I thought about that a little later on, and I th and um, like you do, you know, you, you sort of give it a bit of a thought or two and so I did. I'm sat there in my van and I'm, and I'm thinking well is that the way it was for the early prophets? For all those that were sort of on sort of God's side and they had to warn people you know I'm talking about Jeremiah I'm talking about all of them. Were they would you say they, they were the objects of uh, ridicule uh, by the rest of the non-world at that time? Would they have been some solitary figure that stood there in some public square and just gave out all this message about getting to know the Christ or changing their ways or something on those lines? Because that's what this geezer was doing. Sure enough, whichever way you look at it, this guy was giving out a warning message to everyone that was there. And I'm probably the only one that picked up on that. The rest of them were just thinking he was talking a load of gargly goop rubbish. But um, I'm not sure he was brave. Or maybe, you know, maybe not all there. Because I didn't actually engage him in conversation. I didn't have the time to do that. I think it might have been fair on my part if I had done, you know, at least exchanged maybe names or something like that. 
And I could have just asked him, you know, what's motivated him to come to Colwyn Bay and send out this message. I would love to have known what he was going to say. I'll tell you what, though. He's got more gumption and more bravery than I've got. I don't think I could ever do that in the month of Sundays. Not unless I had some kind of miraculous road to Damascus uh, occurrence where uh, it sort of uh, spiritually <laughs> opened everything up on me. And maybe then, and only then, I could do it. But I used to often wonder how I used to go about going on the witnessing work. You know, in Sydney, uh, and in Bury, in the UK, all over, wherever I was, where I was, where I was living at the time, I often wondered, <laughs> what was it that made me do it? You know, was it because everyone else was doing it? And you give a bit of thought about this, you'll come to the conclusion that no, you took part in the preaching activity because you actually wanted to. I don't think it was because somebody had your arm behind their back or something like that. They weren't forcing you. You'd come to some kind of conscious decision that you wanted to take part in that preaching work. You wanted to sound out whatever message it was, you know, the preaching message about the good news. So you kind of voluntarily took part in it. Just as this guy in Colwyn Bay, he voluntarily and consciously made a point of coming to where everybody was in that shopping precinct and then delivering that message, which I would say was some kind of warning message because he was definitely telling them that they need to change their ways. And that's what he said on his um, T-shirt arrangement. There was a message on the front, there was a message on the back, and it was about getting to know the Christ before it's too late. And then he had to follow it up by telling them, and he said it in a sort of old man's sort of uh, shouting tone. And he said, how can you expect to be saved when you haven't even taken the time to get to know the Lord? You're hypocrites. And that's what he said. And I thought, Bloody hell, what's going on? <laughs> anyway, I thought I'd share that one with you because I just found it completely uh, interesting and curious. And I wondered whether he was the first in the UK to give out the warning message. Well, I should, I should imagine others will be giving it out at some stage, but it's certainly the first that I've come across that's given it out. Let's just say that. And it was interesting to have a little listen. Anyway, I'm off this week. Um, I haven't got any symptoms of COVID, but you do have to abide by the NHS app advice. When you open it up and you see a message like that, there's like a countdown. It'll say seven days and it will just count down. And then when I woke up this morning and it said six, so naturally I know that somehow they're monitoring my particular situation. But also within the app, you have to tick a box that says that you understand the terms and conditions of what's required of you. And when you read through that, it's saying you can't go out. So if, if you need anything, milk, sugar or anything like that, you, you have to arrange for have, to have that brought to the house. So you can't go to the bank. Um, and if you're one of those that, you know, are very independent, you don't like to ask anybody else, and that's me, I don't like being beholden to anybody. I'm very independent. I suppose that's what, in many ways, that's why I've, in the past I've not really relied on Jehovah. And uh, everybody's saying that, yes, you need to rely on Jehovah because it's all about having that personal relationship that, that becomes paramount in eventually um, a person getting uh, to the point where he actually knows what direction he's going in. Um, anyway, I digress, as I sometimes do. I always do, don't I? I always go off on tangents, but I'll come back again. So, um, yeah. Um, everybody happy? Everybody making any sort of uh, money out of this uh, COVID-19? 
uh, I shouldn't really sort of uh, bring it down to material things, but don't you think that um, there's an awful lot of companies that have cashed in? There's an awful lot of criminal networks that are posing as sort of businesses. They're not legitimate businesses, they're bogus businesses, but the government thinks they're legitimate businesses, and so they're giving them those concessions. And I just think this is what I hate about normal mankind. In a catastrophe, they'll find a way of profiteering. And it really is um, something that I wish didn't happen, but unfortunately it happens on an alarming scale. Yes, uh, a lot of Europeans that are over here that seem to know how to play the system really well, better than we do. We don't seem to know how to play the system at all, but they do, and uh, they seem to profiteer. And I'm just, I'm looking forward to the time when uh, none of this will ever happen, you know, that there won't be this kind of level of corruption. And talking about corruption, what did you think about the US elections? Now, I did some research on this. Now, don't shout me down here, but I read about um, the election machines that they used in the US elections. And that's... There are so many states in the USA that accepted these sort of Dominion voting systems. Now, I was told that they weren't supposed to have a modem in, but some did. Then I did a bit more research and found out that there's some kind of uploads going on during the night, but they say that was just them updating software, but what are they doing updating software on these machines during the night? Anyway, this is hearsay, and it's very, very difficult to prove. But for me, there was nothing right about that election. It, it just didn't seem kosher. It, it did seem as if some skullduggery had took place. I do hope we, eventually we get to know what really happened because I just don't believe for one minute that somebody can be so far ahead during the normal voting hours and then during the night it can go skyrocket to his opponent. The accelerated time that it took for him to overtake him like that, for me, it just didn't seem logical. You know, I know they pass it off and say, oh, it's the US vote, it's the votes coming in on the postal system, and all of that was going to Biden. Well, fair enough, fair enough, but there's not really a lot of evidence, is there? Um, <laughs> I mean, what about all these rumours that the Republicans are saying about they went in to sign and they've given special pens? I mean, what's all that about? I've never been given a special pen. And what about the irregularities? I mean, there's just so many things that just don't seem right. This is probably not the time to discuss that, that this level of um, seriousness. But the media was so quick, weren't they? They were so quick to announce Joe Biden as the winner. Anyway, all I'm saying is, I just hope that if any skullduggery is taking place, I really, really do hope that the truth will come out about that. And even if it means it's avoided election, I know that would be very serious, wouldn't it, to call it avoided election, and I really, we don't hold any hope that that's gonna happen. I can't see them doing that, to be honest with you. But as long as sort of millions of people know that there was something just not quite right about that election, so that in four years' time, if Trump decides he wants to stand again, they can remember all of this and uh, make sure that the company that supplied the voting machines, the electoral voting machines, I think they were called Dominion, make sure that they don't have the contract next time. Um, and they go, <laughs> conspiracy theories. So you've got religion, you've got conspiracy theories. Uh, makes, it, makes life interesting, doesn't it? You know, it can't all be about religion. It's nice to have something else to worry about. But bring it all back to really where it's all going. Despite what's happening in the world with the election results, and no matter who gets in, they will always make a balls of it. You know, good English word, that. But they will. 
Boris is making a bowls of what he's come in to do. I should imagine Biden will make a bowls of what he's come in to do. I don't think that he'll have the same urgency as, uh, as Trump. And they all do. None of them ever, ever succeed. Because they're just human. And, you know, we're born into inherited imperfection. And we die that way. And all through our life, we continue to make mistakes. And I think that's why we all have to point everybody at the moment to something that's coming along that is much, much better and something that can't be corrupted. You know, it, if it says something, it delivers on that. And of course, I'm talking about God's kingdom. So I'm very, very much for God's kingdom, even if it means I'm one of the destroyed. I'm still for God's kingdom. Think about that. I don't mind sacrificing myself. I don't mind being one of the billions that perish as long as I see that kingdom take over human affairs who are corrupt to the hilt. Thank you.